Coming up next is the empowerment song. Get ready for a life-changing experience. You shall be empowered for greatness and your God-given purpose unleashed. And now, Pastor Remy Oshikanlu from RCCG Chapel of Greatness is ready to encourage you with a word that would impact you for greatness. Hello, this is Pastor Remy Oshikanlu of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Chapel of Greatness. Whatever you do, do not change that dial. This is not just another religious program. This is a program I believe will change your life for the better. Uh, We are the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and it's a Pentecostal Bible-believing church where the undiluted Word of God is preached. Our church is located at 201 Peninsula Boulevard, Hempstead, New York, 11550. And we're right opposite the Hempstead Town Hall. We have two services, 8.30 a.m. to 9.15. It's a quick morning due service. And our worship service is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday. I want you to check us out online. Go to Facebook, subscribe to our Facebook page, Chapel of Greatness. And you could check us out on Instagram, Chapel of Greatness. But more importantly, I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search for Chapel of Greatness. We have Chapel of Greatness TV. And you can watch us live from any location in the world on Sunday. And you could also have the opportunity at no charge to listen to all our messages that are on YouTube. But we also want to hear from you. Please send us an email or send us a message on Instagram or YouTube. If you want to email us, if you have a prayer point or you have something you want us or you want to say thank you or you want to to comment on uh, on this broadcast, send your emails to chapelofgreatness at gmail.com. Chapelofgreatness, one word, at gmail.com. All right. Last week we started a series on fulfilling purpose. And the the subtitle last week was No Excuses. And today we're going on with our theme, Fulfilling Purpose, Part 2. And the subtitle today is Perseverance. Perseverance. If you want to succeed, if you want to be a success, if you want to excel, if you want to do something that will change the world, If you want to impact your generation, uh, you can only get there to perseverance. Life is full of ups and downs. Anyone that has not experienced downs is either too young or is just about to experience it. I was listening to a story um, some time ago from Jack Welch, um, who's, you know, it was the... I guess, president of GM or or one of those big companies. And he said he had an interview with a a prospective um, CEO. Some people were interviewing for a CEO position. And he interviewed two people in particular. And this whole story was about the first guy had all the degrees, had excelled in everything he did. Young guy, he had done so well in everything. And his resume was perfect. Everything he touched was gold. And then there was another guy who had done very well in his professional career, and then he had a huge loss, and things went downhill, and then he built himself back up, and he was now in contention. And everybody assumed that the young guy that had the stellar qualifications and was on that upward trajectory was the best candidate. And I believe Jack Welch's little two cents was that, listen, life is full of ups and downs. This guy, he's been booming. He's going to hit the bust because he'll think he's invincible and he'll continue to just take more and more risks. And then the other guy, he's done it, but he's got experience because he's seen the other side. And so now the only worry you have is you don't want him to be too cautious But there's value in the wisdom that you get from failure. I like to say failure is the foundation on which success is built. 
Show me someone that has failed at something. I will show you tomorrow's success. And show me someone that has never failed. I'll show you someone that's never tried anything. So what is perseverance? I was looking at the dictionary and it says the synonyms with perseverance are persistent, tenacity, determination, staying power, indefatigability, steadfastness, purposefulness, having single-mindedness. Steadfastness is doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. This is so important. It's in spite of. Success is in spite of failure. Success is not the absence of failure. This is the problem in the generation today. People are looking for instant success. And instant success has no foundation because you need the capacity to be able to withstand failure so that when you fail, you will be able to continue. Failure is not a dead end. It's an experience. Failure should be embraced as a lesson to greatness. Failure does not mean the end of the road. Failure is just you knowing that, okay, this won't, won't work. Let's go to the next. Perseverance is staying the course. Listen to it again. Tenacity. No matter what. I don't feel like waking up, but I'm going to wake up and get out. I don't feel like doing that job for 20, 12 hours, but I'm going to do it. I don't feel like going to the gym, but I'm going to go. Determination means that no matter what the enemy throws at you, no matter what your body throws at you, you are still going to get it done. Stay in power means that as you are trying, everything is working against you. But you know that there's a God that is in you. And you know that his word is yea and amen. You know that if God says, greater is he that is in me than is in the world. It's not just a saying. It's a lifestyle. Steadfastness indefatigability that means no matter what you do i'm not quitting purposefulness now for you to persevere you must be going somewhere because perseverance without a goal or a mission perseverance without a purpose is punishment i shared with you before that it's like playing a game of basketball with no hoops it's like playing the game of soccer with no goalpost. How do you play soccer if there's no goalpost? How do you score? How do you play tennis with no net? You need to have an aim. You need to have a purpose. You need to have a goal. And then once you are focused on that goal, I'm going to get out of this situation. I'm going to get out of this rut. I'm going to stop these things that I'm doing. I'm no longer going to be living from hand to mouth. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to make this marriage work. I'm going to stop. I'm going to discipline myself. I'm going to plan my time. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to read my Bible every day. You have to make that decision. God is in it to bless you. But if you look at Revelation 3.20, Revelation 3.20 says, Jesus is at the door of your heart. And he's knocking at that door. He's knocking through this program. He's saying, young man, young woman. He's saying, let me in. But he's a gentleman. He's not going to badge in. And he's saying that if anyone will open the door and allow him to come in, then he will sup with you, which means he will work with you. If you deny God, he will deny you. If you acknowledge him, if you obey him, he will bless you. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two to 33. This is such an interesting story. You need to study Paul. Paul was such 
such, such a great man. God used him so mightily. The challenge today is everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to talk to a million people. Everybody wants to buy the best car. Everybody wants to live in a mansion. Everybody wants to be popular. Everybody wants everything. But most people are not doing what they have to do. For you to fulfill your purpose, you have to persevere. You have to be purposeful. You have to be steadfast. You have to have stay in power. You have to be persistent. And you have to have tenacity. You don't give up. You hold on until you get what you want. Let's go through 2 Corinthians 11, 22, 33. I tell you this all the time. The Bible is a manual. There's nothing you need in life that is not in the Bible. Many people just want to talk. They want to talk about just motivating people. Motivation without the Spirit of God to back you up will end up in failure. It is the Spirit of God that quickens our mortal bodies. And so let's let, listen to this. This is Paul speaking. He says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. You would think that was it. This is Apostle Paul telling us how he's been through so much. They've beaten him. He's been shipwrecked. They've put him in prison. They've tried to kill him. They've kept him cold. He's had to sleep rough. He's gone through everything. You'll think he'll give up. By the time you get to verse 28, he says, Beside all these things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches in spite of everything that is going on apostle paul is still thinking of how to help what to do how to move the work forward single-mindedness steadfastness he says in verse 29 who is weak i am not weak who is made to stumble and do not burn with indignation. Then he concludes, he says, If I must boast, I boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under Arethas, the king was guarding the city of Damascus with a garrison desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in a wall and escaped from his hands. What is Paul saying? This is a testament, a testimony of perseverance. You want to be like Paul? You want to write three quarters of the Bible? You want to excel in what you do? Then you have to do what those that are excelling, you have to do what they're doing. Apostle Paul did not just waltz his way into being a great man of God. 
In the secular world, Usain Bolt does not just roll around and is the fastest man on the planet. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail. He persevered. Instead of being released, he said, no, I don't care about my life. Yesterday, we celebrated 50 years, or we marked 50 years of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. He was beaten. He was put in jail. He was abused. And he paid the ultimate price. But you want to speak like king and you don't want to walk the walk that king walked. There's no one that will fulfill their purpose without perseverance. Paul was beaten. Paul was hungry. Paul was arrested. Paul was put in prison. And here we are sitting down saying, well, things are tough. Well, it's because of my divorce. Well, it's because of the side of town I live in. Well, it's because of my color. God does not bless colors. We said Acts 10, 34 clearly tells us that he's no respecter of persons. He's God over all. He has given you a mind. He has given you an opportunity to listen even to this broadcast right now. He's telling you no more excuses. Persevere. Make a decision. It won't be easy. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. But it is where you see tough people that you see great success. If, you see, if it was easy, everybody will do it. That's why the bottom has so many people and the top has a few. How many people will ever climb Mount Everest? Few. I'm not going to do it. Because it's not easy. For you to climb Mount Everest, you are going to persevere. How many people run the New York Marathon or the, Lond or the London Marathon or, or the Boston Marathon? Very few. If we have... 20 million people in New York City. I'm sure you just probably have a couple of thousands running the marathon because it's not easy. You have to persevere. And that's why people are looking for get-rich-quick schemes that are scams. For you to fulfill your destiny, brothers and sisters, for you to achieve your purpose in life, you have to persevere. I don't know what you're going through right now. You're saying, well, pastor, you don't understand. You know, you're a church guy. This is not being a, about being a church guy. This is the truth of the word of God. God is telling you today that I have equipped you. I've given you everything you need to be great. You are no less than the success you are looking up to. The difference between you and the other guy is that one guy is going to go on, he's going to be steadfast, he's going to persevere. The difference is that that guy or that girl knows exactly what they want to do with the rest of their lives. I look at LeBron James, I heard him on television the other day. And they were trying to ask him a question like, you know, who, like, who's the greatest? Or, you know, is he like Jordan or, or is he like this person? Or, or, and they're asking him these questions about Larry Bird. And, and he says, I'm one of a kind. I'm one of a kind. I'm not in the mold of Michael Jordan. I'm not in the mold of Irving Magic Johnson. I'm not in the mold of Akeem Olajuwon. I'm not in the mold of anybody. I'm one of a kind. It may sound arrogant, and he may not be looking at it from the biblical perspective, but he's actually accurate. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. When God made you, he broke the mold. And the more the opposition to you, the greater your destiny you ought to know this. I don't know where you're listening to me now, but God is speaking to you. Don't look at the guy next to you. 
is speaking to you. Perk up a little bit and listen. Go and Google. If you don't have a Bible, Google it. Google the Word of God. Just say 2 Corinthians 11, 22 to 33. If you have a Bible, pick it up. And when you pick it up, then you make a decision. Read what Paul went through. Whatever you are going through, was it that? Did you go through what he went through? Look at look at this this wonderful woman in American history, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was a slave. She risked her life to free slaves through the Underground Railroad. She made a difference while others, she was in the exact same situation as all those people that were victims. But she rose above her victimhood and made something out of her life. Look at Frederick Douglass. Go and read about him. He made something out of his difficult circumstances. Some of you know the movie, The Butler. Some of you have watched the movie, 12 Years a Slave. Go read the book. Everyone that has made any success of their lives have done it because they persevered. You cannot achieve or fulfill your purpose without being persistent. You can't do it without tenacity. You can't do it without determination. You can't do it without staying power. You can't do it without steadfastness or purposefulness. This is what Apostle Paul was teaching us in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two to 33. He was not boasting. He was using it to encourage those that are weary. He was weary. He was tired. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was in perils of robbers, perils of the waters, perils of his own countrymen. He was attacked by false brethren, people that he thought were his brothers. And yet they betrayed him. They lied against him. They cheated. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was cold. He was naked. But listen to what Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. The same Apostle Paul. Verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight. Isn't that wonderful? Your challenges become a fight. And your fight becomes a good fight when you are fighting on the side of right. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. He kept the faith through perseverance. He says, finally is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The message for you today. The message for you today. Persevere. Hang in there. Fight the good fight. Be steadfast. Don't give up. But for you to be able to access what God has in stock for you, you have to believe in him. You have to trust him. You have to obey him. What Paul is saying here is that he says he has a confidence that there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to him. Then he includes all of us. He says, not just me, but to all those who love his appearing. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Or are you just living as if the world is not going to come to an end? If you live 70 years, at the end of the 70 years, what happens? If you live 90 years, at the end, what happens? 
You have to make a decision today. And that decision is simple. You could say this small prayer, the short prayer, say, Father, I'm sorry. I have sinned against you. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. Confess your sins. Say no more to the things that you ought not to be doing. And say, welcome to Jesus. Say, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I don't want to live in sin anymore. And then you have to find a Bible-believing church like the Redeemed Christian Church of God. If you are in New York, just look for us, Chapel of Greatness. If you want to search for us, go on YouTube. You will see us right there. You will listen to some of our messages. We are right opposite the town hall in Hempstead at 201 Peninsula Boulevard. And there's a redeemed Christian church of God. Just type in RCCG. There's one anywhere that there's one close to you somewhere, no matter where you are. And you will hear the undiluted word of God. The important thing is to have a relationship with Jesus. I want to thank you for listening to us. I want to encourage you to persevere. I want to encourage you to stand. And you will have good success in Jesus' mighty name. We'll continue next week on our topic, Fulfilling Your Purpose. God bless you.